Hey guys, Mocha Boy here from RC Groups. Uh, so in this video we're going to be covering a Bluetooth module setup. Uh, we're going to be configuring the Bluetooth module. We're going to be uh, building a couple of wiring harnesses to get it connected in. And uh, I'm just going to talk about a couple of gotchas that you might end up running into. Uh, so let's just talk about the components for, for a moment. Again, Cryos All-in-One Pro. This is the version 1.1 board with the reinforced uh, USB sockets. This is the RC Timer. Uh, Bluetooth module. Now first gotcha here, Bluetooth modules will differ in their configuration from retailer to retailer. Some of them will have the baud rates set at 9600 and in the case of RC Timer, and unfortunately I didn't realize this until I actually tried to hook this up, the, the baud rate for the RC Timer one is 115k, so 115200 baud. Um, the prerequisite for this entire process is to make sure that when you flashed your controller that you set S0 and S0 is the FTDI port that's that port right there above the USB port that's S0 this is S2 or S2 and S3 are in this set of serial ports right here I don't believe S1 is used for anything but you know I, I could be wrong about that if you know uh, of anyone who's used S1 uh, successfully, just, you know, drop it down in the comments there. So anyway, FTDI port, when when you get um, the Bluetooth module, it comes with a four-pin female header. So your first problem is, how are you going to get that connected into that? So the FTDI port is a six-port, um, is a six-pin port, and from top to bottom it goes uh, ground, ground, VCC, receive, transmit, and then DTR. On the Bluetooth side, what you have is, from left to right, ground, VCC, receive, transmit, or transmit, receive. It's, it's silk screened on the side there. Anyway, the, the idea here is that you've got to get that connected into the FTDI port, but only the pins that you need. So, in your flight pack, or in your, um, um, when you received your Christ board, you should have gotten a set of wires and harnesses and, um, and Molex connectors, micro Molex connectors. What you want to do is you want to grab either one of the four or six pin connectors. And this is what the six pin connector looks like. And uh, we're only going to be using pins two through five. We're not going to bother with one and six because one is uh, an extra ground and then six is a DTR. But um, going from right to left now, it's ground, VCC, and I always mess this up, but <laughs> uh, receive and transmit. And then uh, those come into uh, mail headers. Now, I built this. This is uh, what you need are these uh, crimp on connectors. If you don't have these, uh, stop by Pololu, Pololu, excuse me, dot com, and uh, you know, just pick up a, a set of the male and the female header pins. These are about six and seven bucks uh, a piece for a roll of a hundred. You will use these and you'll probably use the, the female pins more than you will the male, but in this case I, I have these. So you crimp those onto the ends. You also pick up a, a four pin header and then everything just slides right into there and locks up. And you've got a connector. Now this is just to to get this configured and verify that everything's working when I go to actually put this in the, the rig uh, permanently, I'll, I'll probably substitute this um, that housing for one of these housings. But uh, that's a fairly involved process only because I don't have the uh, exact crimper for these micro Molex connectors. It's like a $300 crimper and I, you know, I'll probably just do it with a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's get this set up and, and see if everything connects the way we think it's going to. Um, this is just a 10 amp ESC, and if you can see that, I split off I split off the, uh, the VCC and ground line. So first things first, let's get these connected. Now I like to have the um, locking tabs facing up on both sides. This helps just so that uh, you don't run into problems where you're you know, flipping this around accidentally. If you just make it a rule, to always have the uh, 
locking tabs facing in the same direction, then you'll, you know, it's one less thing to have to worry about. And God knows how many times I've switched polarities. So that's one connection. And then that goes into the FTDI port. And again, that's the, uh, that's listed as S0 in the, in the firmware. Um, I did solder on the, uh, extend, the extend port power pins. And uh, if you can see there, I marked one of them as, uh, as the hotline, as the VCC. This is really easy to, uh, to flip the polarity, so double check that and triple check that before you turn anything on. Okay, hot, hot, and should be good to go. So if I plug this in, Magic smoke, that's a good thing. <laughs> Here the capacitor is firing. Uh, we're good to go. We've got a we've got a live board. Okay, so I'm gonna flip over to a desktop recording and um, we'll get this connected. To the Cryos board, we are powering the Cryos board from the extend power port. And uh, now we're going to see if we can try to get a connection. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my Bluetooth icon in the taskbar. And uh, we're going to scan for that device. So we're going to say add a device. Windows is going to look for it. And there it is, popped up, cryos underscore BT. And again, this is the RC timer version, so it's probably going to say cryos. If you got a Bluetooth module from some from someplace else, you're going to need to know what the baud rate is, what the default baud rate of that, that um, device is as well as what the pairing code is. And the pairing code will either be 0000 or, or 1234. So we'll select that and that. And again, enter the device's pairing code. Okay, so, right. If you uh, get a successful pairing, you will see a uh, notification that the device drivers are installing. You, uh, this should only take about a couple of um, a couple of seconds, but uh, as soon as that's done installing, you should see some additional COM ports uh, pop up on your screen. All right, and that's the second beep there. That's the second COM port. Okay, so your device is ready to use, and uh, now we need to see where those got installed. So I'm right-clicking again over my Bluetooth icon. I'm going to open those settings for Bluetooth settings and click on COM ports should see two. There they are. Okay, so 11 and 12. Uh, outgoing and incoming. Um, my guess is that it's probably going to be 12, but we'll have to play around with that in uh, Mission Planner. Okay, so coming into Mission Planner, uh, go ahead and click down on the Comport drop-down box. And um, 11 and 12 have shown up. So let's try 12 and see what that does. And again, the, the baud rate for this is going to be 115,000. So let's connect and see what happens. Okay, so it wasn't the incoming port. Let's try the outgoing port. All right, so. Come back to the, uh, the COM port drop-down box. Uh, let's pick the first one, COM 11. Three and six are uh, just some virtual ports that I have. So, um, okay, so let's get 115,000 configured for that. And then connect. Now I have a suspicion that, oh, look at that. We got a good connection. All right, so good. We'll wait for those PID settings to, uh, for those Mavlink settings to get loaded and um, see what the board's doing. All right, success. We got it. Took a couple of tries. So yeah, a couple of gotchas for this. Um, there are a few places where baud rates are set. Uh, this is one of them. I'm going to just disconnect here. Fantastic. Um, the baud rates are set here. And the baud rates are set on the board themselves, and then the COM ports will actually have baud rates as associated with them as well. So uh, the only way to, to see what those baud rates are is to go into your device manager and just verify. Uh, 
on the properties tabs of those ports. So let's see. Ports, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at COM11 and see what was set up for that. Now that's interesting. This was set to 9600 and yet it still worked over, um, you know, since the board is set to 115. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna let sleeping dogs lie. This worked. I'm not gonna mess around with that setting. Let's leave that where it is. And just for kicks and giggles, let's see what that's set to. Yeah, I don't know, can't explain that part. All right, uh, good. Now we can move on to some, uh, some more fun stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just uh, post down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.